So then, what was it, what would be your like first piece that you remember getting when you were back skating? Like, oh shit, okay, I'm a for real skater. Like, shit. First of all, I'm, I never said oh I'm the, for real skater. <laughs> I've been the coach. Let me let me. I don't know. Out. I ain't part of it. Let me let me say that first and foremost. You don't just wake up one day and say oh shit, I'm a for real skater. It doesn't work like that. Okay. That's not uh, what happens. Um, but piece wise, I think the first thing that I got. That was like, oh, this shit's fire. It was probably a pair of. My father's gonna toast me for this, but I don't give a fuck. Fuck it. It was a pair. Of, I had actually met Chad Muska. He gave me a pair of. Really, nigga? Oh, yeah. so you break it down for me. Yeah, nah, we don't know about that, skating. That, that was skate company shit. Yeah, Andrew Reynolds, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that shit. Okay, shout out. That Andrew. shit, that shit. Fire, man. He, came, he had his own sneaker. I had them shits. Them shits was pretty dope, too. The Death Wish teams. The bitch was like all red. So you wasn't one of those kids that was like at Hot Topic? I'm just saying, a lot of the kids that like skate and shit at the time that I knew growing up, they all would like dress at Hot Topic and shit like that. You well, wouldn't, frankly, you wouldn't if find we went to Hot Topic, topic. you were still in that bitch. Uh, like, what you still out of Hot Topic? T-shirts and shit, nigga. T-shirts and shit. Because it, it was like Hot Topic. It wasn't that it wasn't. It was it, Hot Topic. was not. It was like it wasn't like uncool. But it was also like I'm not paying for this shit. Y'all niggas just got me fucked up and think mm. I'm gonna pay this amount of money for that shit. And that's the same with journeys too. So, yeah, I was just journeys. about to say. So where would a young skating rack shop at the shit. time? So here's where the thing. Are you picking up clothes at? I'm gonna keep it all the way This is no bullshit. This ain't me. I for real, for real, will always go out of town for anything that I wanted that I thought. So like even with the super shit, like I had to go to Cleveland to go to them shits because nowhere in my city sold that shit. And by the time it's small. It ain't that it's small, but it's just not as many retail spots that are up on game. When How it's up often would you take trips to Cleveland? Shit, like fucking every other day. Wow. Like, so you, did you get into like let's say flipping and, and, and buying certain pieces when you were in Ohio or when you moved to New York? So quite frankly, I didn't give a shit about selling shit. I wanted that shit for the body. I think I translated even when I got out here to New York. I didn't care. When did you get out here? Okay, oh shit, I've been here damn near 10 years, 11 years. Uh, wow. 11 years. But it wasn't as much about having something to sell as it was about having something to wear. And like, when I would pull up, I wasn't really, because I had the bread, it wasn't about, if I, if I had the money to buy it, then I had the money to wear it. And that's what I feel like people don't be like, it's nowadays niggas be having the money to cop it so they can flip it. It's like, if you ain't got the money to buy it, wear it, keep it, and then sell it for less than whatever it is you paid for it to get back, you know, whatever, a little bit of your investment, maybe a little more if it's worth something, you know what I'm saying? Then you're in the wrong industry. Like, you're going to always be damn near broke because you're going to have to hold on to something until you get the right buyer because you're going to want a certain price that you didn't heard or some shit like that. And you're not going to take nothing less. So it's one of the things where, like, I came into the game, like, with an actual appreciation for shit that I want to wear. Word, and then right. that translated into shit that other people wanted. You had to. You it wasn't about. I wasn't buying shit to sell to a billion Bobby. I was buying shit for racks. I was buying that. You, yeah. you feel me? I didn't yeah. give a shit about. I tell you a story right now. One time, a dude pulled up. He came with his mom. He was a young kid, and it was when uh, the cool grade threes came out the first time. So he pulled up with his mom and shit, and I was there first. I, I, we had the same size foot. Oh fucking well. I guess Tommy gonna have to go home. Sorry, you gonna have to buy that nigga some Atari games or some shit. So I'm gonna have to pick up my shoes. Right, right. You feel right. me? The, 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 even the store manager came to me, hey man, we know you're a VIP shopper and all that. Hey, listen, if wow. you asking me to give up some sneakers, bruh, I, I need these. Yeah, yeah. 
And where was this? In New York? This was in Ohio, nigga. What? Uh, this was in Akron. Yeah. How important was that to like be that that guy with the new shit or it what you even, said items that meant to you? It, it wasn't even about. See, that's the thing, bro. It was never like here's the shit. If you like something, you don't give a fuck about, you know, what the next motherfucker think Damn, or, yeah. like, the opinion of getting it. And quite frankly, if you like some shit enough, you're going to understand that they're not going to stop making this shit. Yeah. That's what be killing me sometimes about, like, releases now. I love it. I love the hype. I love the, you know, the, the anticipation. Yeah. That, that, that. A nigga like me, man. I love the game. I love the hustle, man. That shitty feeling that me and my nigga Gordon have in the morning when we don't. Our names weren't selected, and we had like six phones out, and, and it didn't happen. Right, right, right. And then we just like, oh shit, now how much we gonna have to pay? You know, wow. we really want the shit. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, it was never really a thing for like being that guy. It was like, I like Jordans, I want Jordans, okay. but they only selling 50 pairs because my city only getting 100. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Okay. So that wasn't really no fault of Jordan brand. Yeah. That's you know. The stock is in the city. If you ain't can't supply the demand, then I guess you ain't gonna have a line outside your store, which is a double negative because you want that attention to come to your storefront. So it's cool if you got 10, 12 pairs. That's when you know build a relationship with a motherfucker and praying to God that they hold you down on your size coming to play. You know what so, I'm saying? So uh okay. So back to your brand then. Are you gonna be doing exclusive limited pieces? Like Everything exclusive and limited. Mm. Mm, okay. I hand make all that shit. As you can see here, it's, exactly. it's all it's all here. It's all made. I do it all. You see the Lindsay Jean shit? You see, you see how the screen's right here? Yeah. You see what's on my body, right? Yeah. Because I made this shit. It's not some shit. And no one else can get this shirt. This is the, I made this for me. This is mine. So like, you're, you're making all the product in-house yourself? Yes! Don't, doesn't everybody? <laughs> wow. Dang. So like, okay. I hand, on made, I hand press. How long Box, do you work? pack, ship. Seven days a motherfucking week. Yeah. What's your what's your what's your nine uh, what? Nine. I'm up at like six a.m. Yeah. Wow. It's it's really it varies though. It varies. Sometimes I get up early. Sometimes I get up late. But I'm always getting work. Yeah. So one of the things is it's just always staying, I guess, motivated and with that drive. But as long as I got you know stuff to acquire, or, you know, milestones to to meet in my personal life, because it ain't for nobody else. Right. Right. It's for me. So you design, yeah, let's get it out. What's your process like? How do you design? Because I see, like you said, the Balenci jeans. So you like like to poke fun at other brands, you know, and push the boundaries. Like I also saw something um, black, Boss Black, or what is it? That's coming soon. Don't yeah. Worry, don't worry about that. That's okay. So basically, Grace Gold, what it is, is Grace Gold is the man umbrella. That's my baby. That's, that's where it all started. That's what, you know, got me into the game. So what happened was, once I started creating under Grace Girl, I realized that my, my format of creating really kind of goes even outside that. Yeah. That's something that I made, because I'm a creator, so I can do what I want. Right. But it, you don't want to sell people confusion. Okay. So you want to keep a brand's aesthetic consistent. You get what I'm saying? So Grace Girl is more of a lifestyle, skate, you know, chill, Brand, if you will, you know what I'm saying? Oh. Lifestyle. I don't like to use lifestyle. It's just like some shit that you know you could, you might could wear that and get in trouble with your hair to school. Uh, but it yeah, look, right. Like, like you always had those t-shirts. Like you remember the t-shirts with um, the cereal box characters on it selling drugs, like shoes and stuff. Yeah. You wear that, you going straight to high Yeah. So yeah. Not, you, so like shit like that. But in terms of like, that's why I say the exclusivity, the exclusivity is what I pride myself on. I keep pieces of roughly for like a month. Okay. I make everything. I make like 25, 30 pieces. I do size runs. I do random colors. That's the whole thing about the brand is we don't really follow no rules. We do what we want to do. Yeah. We do what we feel. Because yeah. that's what we want to give to you. We don't want to give you something that we saw that that told us to do it. We want to give you something that we feel you should have. Yeah. Okay. It's not about... Oh, well, you should make this piece, this piece, and your collapsible in spring, summer should have this. If I want to put out a fucking chinchilla park in the middle of summer, I'm going to do it. Word. If I want to. Who's your style of, I guess, um, idols? Who do, you, who do you like? You like, okay. Probably, I, got, I took some sauce from that. I took some sauce from that. Probably for real. Give me a top five. I really don't think I got five. Okay, give me as many as you should have. Cause I'm really inspired by like time period. 
Exactly. Shit. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, yeah. So, like, so you can even say that. <laughs> so probably for real like, from 2001. Nah, 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 not even like that. I mean, like not a person, like an actual time period. So, oh, like, oh, so gotcha. Like, like they be making fun of me because I wear a lot of like old uh, button-up shirts. But I like those shits because uh, you know some of my favorite movies. That's what like you know, the cool niggas used to wear. You know, Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the button-up shirt, the silk team with a cool print on the side. That type of shit is like, like um, Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, Leonardo, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, that type of shit, or even like Max Payne. Like okay. I said, I played on the video games, so like the Hawaiian shirt that he has. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So like shit like that. Yeah. Um, uh, we did a, a top, a top uh, ten best dressed anime characters, and we put Vegeta, but we put it in the in the pink shirt. <laughs> like not not just any old. You know? <laughs> Vegeta in the pink shirt. So Rex is Vegeta in the pink shirt. Probably, uh, I'm gonna say for real. Okay. Uh, any, I guess, 80s Latin culture. Word, word. Like, I get what you're saying. Like yeah. 80s, 80s Latin culture is big. You know, they motherfuckers coming with the glasses. Yeah, the, the bowler, the shirt. Yeah. That type of gotcha. shit. Um, yeah. I shot. Short I, shorts. I like, I like tactical shit. You know, functional. Yeah. So I like it. Uh, probably Travis Scott. Okay. Uh, I say Travis Scott. And I won't say that he's like an idol of mine. It's only like a comparison that I say that if anything, I, I kind of like his, his flow and his aesthetic. He don't do too much and he, he don't look crazy in the shit that he do. You know, pull off and he's show up. Um, maybe that's kind of like it. James Bond. I admire your luck, Mr. Bond. James Bond. James Bond. And any uh, black exploitation character. Who's your favorite black exploitation character? For real? Yeah, for real. Uh, you ever seen? Um, oh, it's gonna come to me right now. Uh, Truck Turner with Isaac Hayes. Oh, no. Hey, that's him. That, that's Truck Turner, man. Look, man, that's him. Hey, now, now, wait a minute, man. Now, you said kill a nigga. That's Truck Turner. Look, I don't man, know, it, bro. I don't know. What's it called? Truck Turner. That's the name of the movie. That's the one? Okay. Watch Truck Turner by, with Isaac Hayes. I was in the Dynamite, the bald head dude. Man, the look, 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 listen, you know? listen. Watch Truck Turner. I'm going to tell okay. you, like, that's a, that's a classic. You ain't never seen Truck Currency actually did a whole uh, 